crazy store and it's like throw a bird on it throw a bird on it you you're almost at a point you're at an early point where everything is throw a blockchain on it throw a blockchain there seems to be this sort of remarkable trust that blockchain has sort of realized this utopia of security right and i think that's it's it's really important you said a couple of words that are actually very important there trust and utopia now so full of myself to think that nobody else can come out with the same thing. Somebody else will get to the same conclusion, I hope so. I do believe we are into the phase two of the third industrial revolution in the information era. We don't know yet where this technology is going to do the best good and where it may not work. We're still trying to figure that stuff all out. And I've been growing it in my, main, in my brain for years, you know, like, uh, but really has roots that goes down, down, down to many, 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 many years ago. I meet Roberto Capodici. I met him through a series of coincidences online, essentially. And he started to get me very interested in blockchain technology. And just like all the other kinds of technology that I got my hands on, I just really had to understand it. And so I started, I went and I started reading the Bitcoin source code. I read the NXT source code, which is one that Roberto had been involved with in the past. And uh, I started to understand all the logic for how a decentralized system works and for how, a, uh, um, for how it can actually arrive at a state of truth and all these things that make up blockchain. And since then, I think my interest has been mostly there. I've been, uh, you know, kind of applying this way that I think about technology and figure out problems to design blockchain, including the ZooBC technology they're working on at Blockchain Zoo now. We can only say he holds a Korean passport, I hold a Malaysia passport, you uh -huh. hold a China passport, yeah. you hold an Italian passport. Uh -huh. But we belong to the, to the blockchain. Italiano. You know, so I'm Korean. <laughs> Here we have all these companies approaching us as Blockchain Zoo. Um, they want us to build blockchains for them. And they have these more or less normal software models, you know, where they imagine themselves running a piece of software that they control. But they want to use blockchain for better and worse reasons. On, on the very bottom end, we had people who didn't know what a blockchain is, they just know it's popular and they want one. And on the upper end, we had people who really had thought carefully through what a blockchain is and how it can you know, be useful or meaningful in their business case. Um, but I think every company at one point or another that we worked with, we faced this challenge at one point or other of uh, how they square the fact that they as a company need to be in control of the platform they're developing. But the blockchain is a technology that resists being controlled by anyone. And uh, how to find the middle ground between those. And I think, uh, I think that's one of the larger rifts that's going to continue to play out in the blockchain ecosystem as a whole is for uh, for everybody to figure out how you can make a private blockchain to do what your company needs while it still actually exists as a kind of a public organism. And it's uh, that was very challenging because it led to a lot of a lot of head scratching if you want. You know, uh, you know the company says we want to do this and we tell them all oh, the blockchain works like this for these kind of reasons and they say oh but we really need it we'd like it to be a blockchain but we need it to be able to do this and um and uh you know it, it led to a lot of going around in circles to try to understand what's the correct way to uh, fit both of these needs i think that was a big challenge we faced Industri teknologi itu jauh lebih tua dibandingkan industri blockchain. Dan kita harus tahu industri teknologi itu dibangun atas konsep dasar sentralisasi. Ya, jadi kalau blockchain kan konsep desentralisasi. Jadi revolusi industri yang men, yang berusaha dibawa blockchain adalah mendesentralisasi apa yang sudah dibangun puluhan tahun sebelumnya. Jadi itu tantangannya paling susah sih. Bagaimana membuat sesuatu yang sebelumnya fondasi dasarnya centralized menjadi decentralized.
kita percaya bahwa blockchain di Indonesia ini akan membantu banyak hal sih. Salah satunya problem Indonesia terbesar itu adalah uh, korupsi dan blockchain menawarkan satu solusi transparansi ya. Jadi kita melihat bagaimana blockchain ini akan membantu khususnya dalam perjuangan Indonesia di dalam revolusi industri 4.0 ini akan membuat uh, semua proses industri di Indonesia menjadi lebih transparan, menjadi lebih uh, efektif ya. Terus kemudian ini juga akan membuat suatu suatu terobosan lah dan teknologi yang sekarang bisa menjawab dan memecahkan masalah itu yaitu blockchain. FBI. As I have a past experience in working with law enforcement uh, to develop specialized software for investigation for intelligence, uh, I found myself uh, in a very interesting spot with a nice niche kind of experience. I think that the most rewarding term of satisfaction is the project that we are implementing now, which is a blockchain platform. It comes out from many years of thinking. There is a fantastic architecture and there is uh, something that uh, I'm sure is going to leave a mark in the history of uh, evolution of information technology. ZUBC is not an ICO. There are no pre-mined coins to pre-sell to people or do things of sort. To be see work like Bitcoin, start creating token as it goes. So the first people running a node are gonna collect tokens, which are gonna be necessary for the functioning of the blockchain. We believe that the adoption of blockchain is so big and the quality of the technology around is not fit for what needs to be done. That we're gonna talk to a lot of industry and license the use of ZUBC for business-related activities, consortium of large enterprises, government, etc. And we want to educate as many software houses as possible to use ZUBC to implement their solution. So this is the core business model. We're going to have also a public blockchain that is open to everybody, where people can experiment, that is going to have his token as well, and is going to have his own economy. But this is not something that make us any different from anybody else that want to participate with their nodes to sustain and maintain the blockchain. It should be even in the top line that I don't see there is 10, I think has been sent, well not, right? And so you have uh, the transaction with the touch of the, uh, the re approval or rejection. I think it's intimate to the space anyway, because I think even for the people who do understand it really clearly, Presenting it in terms that are accessible for people to understand why it's significant is really, really difficult. You know, so you could say, uh, you know, rocket science is nice because as complicated as it is, at the end you see the rocket go up into the sky and everybody can appreciate that. But uh, the um, the benefit that blockchain brings is far more ethereal. You know, it's uh, it's something that's difficult to. It's not as tangible. It's difficult to put your finger on exactly what it is. You have to discuss it in very abstract conceptual terms and uh, people don't uh, appreciate that as easily. So even the people who really get it, it's hard for them to put it in terms that make it easy to appreciate. If we end up not raising money, I believe that the biggest failure is not the fact that we didn't raise money. The biggest failure will be the fact that we weren't able to explain to anybody how exciting and how amazing is ZUBC technology. Because is so complex that uh, explaining it is very hard. We hope that thanks to use cases, we're going to be able to reach a large mass and make them appreciate the technology. But uh, we're going to survive even if we get investors. There are seat open for people that want to jump in the moment that they understand the value of the technology. After hitting the head on the wall several times, things are working in a very nice way. Next week we are going to open to the public and uh, people going to test it. Probably going to find some more problems, but we are going to fix them. And by the time we are going to go with the official stable release, everything is going to be perfect. Yeah.
Do you remember that idol that people send CPU users? Now they are fine. With the optimization? Yeah. <laughs> there is only one. That's so Every 30 hard. minutes. Every 30 minutes it's fine. Because people send? Yeah. Which we suspect is just some people like that. At the end of 2000, ooh, 2018, huh? I decided to stop sales, stop consulting, take everybody and start implementing the new level, the new step in the evolution of blockchain. We invested more than a million dollars. We've been working hard, but we have now the seed. We have now the first working beta version of this new technology and it's something that really make a step ahead. Five step ahead of Bitcoin, three step ahead from Ethereum, and at least one or two step ahead from everybody else. And this is what is the most exciting thing. Earn money and return the money to evolve the technology.